Good day, subscribers. Today is episode four of semester two, CS7637 final review. If you'd like to see the previous episode before watching this one, click the banner in the upper right hand corner. In the last episode, we went over how to prepare for the program, and we went through the four specializations that are offered in the OMS CS program and how to specifically prepare for each of those specializations. We went through computational perception and robotics, computing systems, interactive intelligence, and machine learning. As always, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. We've made a really big jump since the last video, and we're actually above the quarter point for a thousand subscribers, which is fantastic and I love to see it grow. This episode's comic is about some people's perception of how AI works, and the joke of how it really works. So in this episode, we're going to be going through CS7637 Knowledge Based AI, which is the course that I took over this summer semester. So this course is, in my opinion, a really fantastic course. It gives a really good description of how AI works, and it's got some very interesting and manageable coursework throughout the course. So the course is made up of three homework assignments, three projects, which are actually one project that's split into three sections, and three exams. In addition, there's some surveys and some peer feedback thrown in there, but that's really easy stuff to get through, so it's not really counted too much. On the right side, you can see the grading system for the class. So the homework is worth 30%, exams are worth 15%, and the projects are worth 45%, which I think is a really fair way to break up the class, specifically because it weights the projects so much more than the other features. Another interesting feature about this, as you guys can see, is the total is actually out of 105% rather than just 100%. That extra 5% comes from the performance bonus in the class that you guys can see. What this means is even if you finish the class and let's say you finish with an 89%, which means a B, you have a chance to get an extra 5%, which will bump you up into the A status. The performance bonus is, in my opinion, fairly easy to get. There are different surveys throughout the course that you're allowed to take for extra points and your performance on Piazza, the platform that Georgia Tech uses for discussions throughout the class, also counts towards your performance. Just as an example, I was able to get all 5% for my performance bonus. So in order to take this class, what are the prerequisites? So overall, the class is a great class to take if it's your first semester, and really, the largest prerequisite is you need to have either a knowledge of Python or of Java. And the reason I say or is because, at least for my semester, you were allowed to either use Python programming or Java programming to complete the programming that was needed for the project. In addition, what's the commitment of the class? So the class is actually really manageable. I would consider it a medium to low time commitment. The class is made up of homework, lectures, projects, and exams. And the class goes in a cycle of homework one week, the next week project, and then the third week exam. And then it starts over again, the fourth week would be homework again. In addition, there is no midterm and there is no final. There's just three exams split between the entire semester. So now let's break down what really happens in the class. As I said, the class is broken up into week periods that come into cycles where you do a homework then a project, then an exam, and then back to a homework. So for the homeworks, the homeworks are broken up into four questions, which each have their own subparts, and a maximum submission of 10 pages. The homeworks are usually made up of one question related to the lectures, one or two questions related to AI and the culture, which would be something like give an example of AI in a movie or give an example of AI in the future. And then lastly, a question that has to do with AI in ethics. So this might be a question like, select a famous speaker who has spoken about AI 
in a negative way. And then select a famous speaker who has spoken about AI in a positive way, and then discuss your opinion. These questions are really interesting, and I actually really enjoyed the homeworks because it gave me a really great idea of one, what was going on with AI in our current culture, and then two, just a better general understanding of different views on AI. The second part of this course is the project, which is really the core of the course. The project is actually one large project split into three sections and is all based off of Raven's progressive matrices. Raven's progressive matrices are a set of matrix problems that are supposed to test intelligence based off of the ability to recognize patterns and then select the correct answer that is the final set in the patterns. If you look on the right side of the slide, you can actually see a bunch of examples of some of the questions you would be asked within Raven's progressive matrices. The top picture is a 2x2 two two matrix, which is an example of a problem that was given in the first set, set B. In this problem, you have to take A and B, recognize the pattern that's between them, and then select the correct answer that finishes the pattern for the non-given slide. So in this one, it has A and B, C, and then the correct answer is the last one, 6. Now the goal of this project is not to get you to be able to do this, but to get your program to be able to do this. And there's lots of different ways to do it. As I said, this project is broken up into three parts. The first part is to deal with these 2x2 two two matrices. The second part is to deal with 3x3 three three matrices, which is the second picture in this slide. As you can see in this one, the pattern is that the part is moving across itself. And so you have ABC, DEF, G, H, and then the correct answer, which is 3. And again, the goal is not to get you to be able to answer these questions, but to get your agent, your program, to be able to answer these questions. And then lastly, you have questions that are, again, 3x3 three three matrices, but these have become a lot more difficult for your program to understand, and those are shown in the bottom. This project is very interesting and a really great example. My only complaint about it is it doesn't quite show exactly what AI can do. The project can be solved using mostly if-then statements, as well as for loops and while loops and any kind of combination of those things. So it doesn't exactly show, for example, how a neural network would work, or how deep learning would work, or even how machine learning would work. Lastly, we have the exams, and there are three of them throughout the course, again, in that cycle that I've been talking about. These exams are all based on the lectures and are made up of a five-point multiple choice question. Like I said, I really enjoyed this class, and there are a lot of pros to it as opposed to just a few cons. The first pro is that the course information is very interesting, and it makes it very easy to stay engaged with the lectures and watch all of the lectures. In addition, the course and this project specifically are made up of mostly programming, the time commitment for the class is very manageable, and an A in the course is very achievable. There are only a few cons, and that's really just dealing with the exams. First of all, you have to use ProctorTrack with the exams, which is something I've talked about before and just not my favorite program to deal with. And second, the exams are a bit tricky. Not everything is totally clear while reading the questions, but overall the exams are fine. So who should take this course? So first, this course is a really great course if this is your first course in the OMS CS program. And that's really due to one, the manageable time commitment, two, the achievable high grade, which will make you feel really great taking the course and being able to manage it. And then three, the amount of programming in the course without it getting too deep into things, as I said, like neural networks or deep learning. And second, it's a really great course for students who have little to no understanding of AI. The class gives a really great overview of how AI works, along with giving you great examples through the projects of what AI can do. And finally, would I take this course again? And my answer is an astounding yes. I really enjoyed this course. I found the information very, very interesting and engaging, and the projects were fun to do and able to be completed. I never felt like I was super bogged down by the weight of the course, and I was really able to learn and enjoy the course and do well in the course. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, 
And if you have any questions or comments for future videos, drop that in the comment section. Thanks and subscribe.